Out of all the historic magic and religious symbols, one stands out. One is to be seen way more often than anything else. The swastika. It's much older and far more common even than the Christian cross. It is found even on the ancient artifacts of both Americas. Yet another proof that these continents did not develop in isolation. Which, by the way, is a very, very new idea. swastika is synonymous in the West with fascism and its powerful association with hate, pain and fear runs deep. But this negative connection is only relatively recent as the swastika is found across all continents and is seen in all religions and traditions as it is one of Earth's oldest sacred symbols representing good fortune, peace and light. When the Second World War began, the swastika, along with the double-headed eagle, was still one of the main state symbols of both Germany and Russia. Somewhere during the middle of this war, Russia stopped using it as an official symbol because it was kind of ridiculous. Your symbol, your coat of arms, is what is supposed to distinguish you from your adversary and in this case both sides had the same symbols. As of today amongst the so-called advanced countries it is only Finland that has this swastika on all kinds of official emblems and signs. The rest of the so-called advanced world is plunged into this very recent negativity towards the ancient sign of prosperity and harmony. In most of Asia, where the traditions are still kept alive, there is no trace of this negativity towards this swastika, and they are to be seen by thousands in the temples, by the sides of the roads, in all kinds of decorations, 
printed editions, etc. Americas, swastikas are found on the artifacts of the pre-Columbian cultures, blankets, pottery, etc. The Native Americans used them widely and so did the foreign settlers when they arrived on the continent. Even as close as a couple of centuries ago, when the negativity towards this ancient symbol has not yet infected the Americas, it was part of official and non-official symbols. was used by organizations like, for example, the Boy Scouts. of countless swastikas on artifacts of all eras and ages is not denied by the official historians. But they pretend not to notice the obvious question which all these swastikas raise. How come cultures which were far away, allegedly unrelated, some of them separated by continents, and yet all of them adopted this symbol and always made it one of their main symbols. This is in very sharp contrast to the story which they are telling us that people were separated by oceans, people could not effectively travel far away because they didn't have means to do so. And we are not talking just about finding out about this symbol from each other, but also people in the past took symbols much more seriously than we do. They understood their importance and to make something one's main symbol really meant a lot for them. They certainly wouldn't have decided to do so just because some occasional traveler told them, oh, they have this symbol in a faraway land. Hmm. We don't have any symbols of our own and we seem not to be able to come up with any other symbols for ourselves. So let's just adopt this unknown symbol and make it our main emblem. So paid historians avoid to tackle this problem of the worldwide distribution of the swastika because it exposes their unscientific approach to history. So if they can't tell us what was our past, then who will? The common people? Mostly they have even lost interest into inquiring. They see no point. Most people nowadays don't even care where they come from. 
And those little few who care and try to do some research of their own seem to concentrate mostly on the times of 12,000 years ago and how was life before that, which is certainly very interesting. But on the basis of what could we find anything at all about those times if we don't have a single reliable historic dating method and we are in a such dense informational fog that we don't know for sure what was happening even a couple of hundred years ago. Thank you. 